Clay Blackerter here, and we're going to go over stage 17, the H Race of Horror, presented by Hornady. We've got two targets of 510 and 540 yards. The shooting sequence is near, far, near. Then you're going to move, far, near, move, near, far, move, and then you're going to finish with far, near, far. So it's four different positions. We're going to hand it off to Austin Orgay and see how he's going to run it. All right, so first thing I want to do on this is I want to look and, and get oriented with my targets. I want to have a really good visual reference without having to actually see the targets. I know I have a group of cedar trees out here, the big green trees. My first target's off the left side of that. I have a nice two-track road going up to target two, so I have a really good visual reference for both of these targets. For me, my dope is only two-tenths difference on these. So in order to save some time and be able to focus more on what the wind is doing and what the sequence is, I'm going to do a holdover for my two tents. I'm actually going to dial my far target on my elevation and then I dial my near target for my wind. So that puts me holding just under the near target, but I'm not holding any wind. And then I'm holding on with my elevation with a little bit more wind on target two. And so I have good references on both stadias to hold between the two targets. Now, this being a two minute time limit stage, you have time to dial back and forth, but it is a lot of dialing and there's a decent amount of movement. So I wanna allow myself the time to be able to set and break down every shot and break down the wind on every shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and do holds on this because it's only two tenths difference. Now, this is four different positions. It's a kind of a difficult sequence. So what I'm gonna do back here, especially if I'm further down in the squad, I'm gonna watch every time and I'm gonna go through my head the sequence, you know? So I wanna have the, the sequence written down on my wrist code so if I get lost, I can look in, in, in each of my positions and get it. So I have to shoot a near, far, near, and then far, near, then near, far, then far, near, far. So I get to think about that more with the holdover. It's gonna be a lot going from position to position, but I can shoot this stage in my head back here while people are shooting it and I'm going to go through the sequence every time. Every time that somebody takes a shot, that way I have mentally shot the stage a few times before I get to the stage and that takes a little less, less mental capacity while I'm on the clock. So as part of my stage prep, I want to look at all of my positions and what I have available for the positions. So position one is anywhere from this low position here all the way up to the top. Now, I like the low position right here. You can go on this and your bag rests really nicely on that. You'll be able to get steady. You'll be able to manage your recoil really well. When I come here, you have to shoot two positions anywhere in the middle, and they have to be separated by more than a foot. So here I really like this, this high standing position. Um, I can get really solid on a standing position, quick transitions for that one. When I come over here, the terrain drops off a little bit. So now I'm down in a hole. This is gonna be pretty high. I could probably do it, I'm tall enough. A lot of people are not gonna be tall enough. And I don't wanna get into, put myself in a position where I have to tippy toe. So I'm gonna put my bag low. I'm gonna spread out a little bit, get a good wide base. And I'm gonna go a low standing position here instead of having to try to tiptoe up on this. Same thing on this, it's anywhere for your last position, it's anywhere from the top to the bottom. This is a nice height for double knee, uh, uh, you know, a kneeling double knee and you can put your bag right on top here and it's another really good solid position. So those are all things on, on pre-stage that I wanna have in my head before I go because I don't wanna be lost in trying to think about where I'm gonna go while I'm in the stage. I wanna know where I'm going before I start the stage. All right, so I wanna be very cognizant of my bag placement here. I want my bag open and setting really well on this so it's building a good foundation for my stock to rest on, okay? My first target's to the left. Every time I lay my rifle down, my muzzle is oriented in the direction of my target because I don't want to have to hunt for it a lot. It helps a lot for target acquisition. So when I get down, okay, I've got the target in my sights. I have target two dialed in for my elevation. I have target one dialed in for my wind. It means I'm holding two tenths under on target one and no wind. So keeping good pressure, good level scope, sending around one impact okay transitioning target two shifting my body looking down my muzzle orienting at the target okay on target two now i'm adding my wind to target two impact okay now i gotta go back to the near watch your bag falling off orienting it remember holding two tenths under i've, I've done this sequence already just off the right. 
So I know I need two tenths more at least, making my correction here before I ever move. Pick up, move the rifle, move the bag, bag over the top, and now I'm going far. So orienting on target, already added the two extra tenths that I needed. Still off the right, need to add more wind. Now I'm back on, picking up, moving, remembering my sequences. Now I'm going near far. Have my wind corrected on it. Too much wind, dying off a little bit. I need to go back to my original hold. Impact. Rifle up, moving. In position, now I'm at far near far. I got a little bit lost thinking about my sequence. I had it written down on my armband, so I'm not lost now. In fact, impact. There's our breakdown for stage 17 here at Clay's Cartridge Classic. Stay tuned for more pro tips on PRS and we'll see you at a match.